why we came up with the name cult classic for the album well i mean the mushroom cult is it's obviously a, a reference to the mushroom cult but we feel we felt when the material was coming together that it was going to be in the future a classic album in our catalog he had cult classic and he and he was like hey what do you think of this and i was like absolutely that's a fucking great album title because it says what it is or what we hope it will be well it says what we hope it will be it's tied together with the mushroom cult which is a nod to everybody that's followed us forever which i think is great um you know and who doesn't like campy old cult classic movies i don't know i think it's awesome The album op opens with a, a song called Spider Fang, which Jason, because he's a lunatic, he was in a stairwell and he thought the acoustics in the stairwell were, were really cool. So he started banging on this railing and getting a sound from it. And then he kept, and then he recorded it and looped it into his uh, Pro Tools. And then it all started from that. Spider Fang is me in a stairwell in, in a vacant building um, whistling. And I recorded it on my cell phone like, I don't know, three years ago. So it's just me whistling and then me stomping and banging on stuff in that stairwell. And it sounds awesome. So... We didn't try to fix it or change it or recreate it or any of that stuff because when you try to fix or change things and make them studio perfect, you just end up fucking them up and like having it not be as cool. So that's all that it is. It's, it's, I was whistling in there. I can't, kind of came up with this eerie sort of echoey melody. Um, and then the handrail on the wall was loose and it, it makes this really cool sound. And then, you know, the drum, the percussion at the beginning is just me stomping on the floor in this giant empty thing. Um, then I came home and cut it together and I put a guitar part with it and it sat there for years. Like it never got used for it. I didn't know even know what it was. Like it was just me fucking around. Um, and then I played it for Todd and he was like, that's cool. I could be something. So we ended up making a song out of it. So, and it's, and it's really not a, it's not a, it's not a song. I mean, it's sort of a song song, but it's, it's the intent was to make a, an album opener. Um, we have these album openers and we always do that. And I love that about DFD that we have this, you know, this thing at the beginning of all the records that, you know, sets the tone for the whole thing. It's, it definitely sounds like an intro to an album which is obviously why it is. Um, but I said, we can't do this looping uh, vibe for three minutes. If it's going to be an intro and it's going to be this, it's got to be 60 seconds. So I was like, all right, why don't we switch gears? I said, um, you know, at this point, let's add in uh, like a Slayer part. So you're, you're like, pe people are saying, oh, okay, yeah, this sounds like an intro. And then all of a sudden you're like, this is what this album's going to sound like. Oh, okay. We're, it's, we're strapped in and we're on, we're in for the ride. Um, and what's cool about it is that that whole like uptempo metal slayer part um, at the end of the song, it'll dip right back down into Jason banging on the railing and, and me having this circular, really eerie vocal line that repeats with backing vocals coming in and out. It's very uh, soundtrack um, moody. Um, so that, that one I thought turned out great for, for an album opener. A little less distortion. I think I can do it better. I think a little less distortion. A little less. Yeah. <coughs> Drive. Drive. Just 
enough to keep it rolling and consistent. The, the song I wrote for this album is called Vomitorium. And um, the, the line that keeps coming up in the song is, you make me sick. It's like, I guess, a, a, an agoraphobic guy who can't really stand to leave his, his, you know, go out the front door of his house because humanity makes him sick. Um, that one has a ton of moods as well. Um, it starts out with, you know, an obvious intro riff and um, a lot of horns on that one. A lot of uh, maybe a comparison to um, like a Moonlight City Drive in the beginning, but it's heavy. Um, and then it goes into a system of a down up tempo driving uh, verse, um, halftime chorus a super stretched out moody bridge that's that's really cool and then there's just a lot there's a lot of vibes in it there's a lot of twists and turns virtually the entire first minute of that song are my scratch parts so it was uh i tried to recreate that when i came back to do my final drum parts and i just couldn't get the feel um you know i just kind of threw something together it sounded really good and felt good at the time it was my first take through and we ended up keeping that so it's it's you know, usually your first instinct is your best instinct. And with my drum part in Vomitorium, that's the, the scratch part ended up being the, the keeper in the, in the long run. It's like fucking, let's put me the logo. <laughs> The song that takes you on the greatest journey is a song called Spirit Cooker, um, which is like a seven minute opus um, that goes from the riffiest shit to the doomiest of death. Um, it's very epic. That song is a monster and was originally written for a project that I was going to do with um, Matt Ripito and Tommy Sickles that was going to be a three-piece instrumental band um, that has never taken form. But, uh, of course, it was tweaked and, and turned into a DFD song, but the, the, the bones of it were for that project. So it doesn't really have a chorus, and it doesn't really have a verse, and it doesn't have traditional song structure at all, um, but it's you know, it's riffy and all over the place and, and the drumming is absurd and it's awesome. Um, there is a song that I think is Jason's boner moment um, where he, it's called Spirit Cooker and uh, he wrote that from start to finish. Um, it's pushing six minutes long. It's very, uh, it reminds me of Tool, DFD Tool a bit. Um, very creepy and very, uh, kind of this Tom circular, uh, tribal drum feel. And then it just blasts into a chorus that, you know, I think it, it picks up the tempo and it just, it launches off. Um, a lot of dynamics in this song. As soon as you're rocking, you're back down and, and things are building again. favorite uh, by a long shot is spirit cooker spirit cooker um the intro is very uh very jan hammer it's very um like circa 89 miami vice like um you know think of stereotypical latin colombian dudes stepping out of a stretched black you know 500 series mercedes sel and you hear this very jan hammer electronic dark tone in the back it's a song that is sort of starts off, you might think it's quiet, might not slow, but not fast. And then it's just got this kick to it about halfway through that is just 
so damn heavy, but like, you know, but like for me, when I hear like the hair on my arm stand up at times, you know, when it hits just these certain uh, parts, every time I've heard, I've heard another mix of that come in, it's just gotten better and better and better. And when I first heard it, I really liked it. Um, I really liked it, but now it's grown to be like, just for me, it's like the monster of the album. You know, I, I don't like to compare necessarily and say what I'm doing is reminiscent of this or that, but it is very reminiscent of something that what what would happen in a tool first. Very Danny Carey, kind of very loopy and repeating because um, it starts on the, the, the low tom and then kind of has this repeating pattern that works itself down the drums and then loops itself around. Um, and then it's almost like like a three section opus kind of where you have the, you know, the prelude. And then you have the the main symphony, and then you have um, you know the the outro or whatever that would the equivalent would be in classical music. It's been so long since I played an orchestra, I can't remember. Um, but the first half is very ethereal and very kind of um, uh, lots of uh, audio it's like it's not that audio landscape, I guess you could say. Lots of really cool stuff, kind of moving in and out and panning. And then the middle comes in, and it's just it's crushing. It's so so good. I think that personally, Spirit Cooker would be a fantastic end to the album. Um, and again, when you hear it, you'd understand that. It's like, you know, it ends, but then it's not quite over, you know. Um, and it's, it, it goes, in, you know, it, it's, it's really a, a, a mixture of almost like you would think, when you hear it in the beginning, you would think this, like, you know, electronic stuff. Um, we tend to put like, you know, a lot more of the electronic, not just keyboard stuff, but electronic stuff like in uh, with Polkadot Cadaver. Um, but with this, you know, it's got a little electronic thing in it. The thing that surprised me most in it was the bass, honestly, by the time it was done, because I went in with a few ideas, but I really didn't know exactly what to do on this. And um i don't know what it was it just stuff kept coming like on the spot try this let's try this let's try this let's try this and the way that it came out um it was you know i got to use like a, a bass synth on it uh which i don't know that i've ever really used um on an album like this but uh like the bass is consistent through the song it's like you know it's going it's there's bass almost every single second of the song whether you know it or not, at some points it, might, it would even sound like a keyboard or something, but it, it's not. Jay and I are suckers for halftime. I mean, suckers, suckers for halftime. If you if you hit the right halftime breakdown at the right time, there is nothing in music that gives me uh, a virtual boner more than when you land on something that just just crushes, man. It gets your your whole body, your head moving, you know. Um, and that's kind of what what. Uh, uh, the, the second half of the the main you know the main body of the song is that. So we did, we double tracked the drums. The main track is in the studio with the same set, same set of drums. And actually it might even be the, it might even be the same hands, but it's material, but same drums, obviously in the studio. And then when we did the church performance, since we were in the church, why not take advantage of the natural reverb of church? So we recorded the same sections uh, with my acoustics in the church. And then we layered them on top of what I did in the studio. So it's one of the biggest sounding drum parts I've ever recorded ever in my life. And it sounds like, it sounds like the world is coming to an end.
setting up the album order with uh, vinyl in mind. So you can start the, the album on either side. So it'll be designed to listen to, to start on side B if you wanted to, and then get a completely different listening experience. And then you would end potentially, and this, if this all comes to fruition, you would end the album with Spirit Cooker, with all with that stupid, crazy doom. Um, or you would end the album on side B with a song called Destroyer of Hearts, which is a song that Tim wrote, which is almost very poppy sounding. Destroyer. recorded it kind of the same way that was a demo that i did here and gave to the guys just as far as the music just uh, starts with the guitar lick and um on top of that just what feels right you know just diminished chords going up there and then um yeah it's i don't know when i write a song it just kind of you get like a small little outline and then you just kind of go from there and um i think they kind of took it the actually the best part about that was wendy's bass line so all of it was there, um, just adding some some different tones on top of that. But uh, I think I think Wendy's bass line definitely added to it. If you could imagine a loungy, like four piece band in a Holiday Inn, and by the time you get to the middle of the song, it's a heartbreak song. By the time you get to the middle of the song, it sounds like Stone Temple Pilots. By the time you're finishing the song, it sounds like acoustic Stone Temple Pilots, and it winds down to basically nothing. There's a definite thread um, through this record that connects it to the old stuff. There's no doubt about that. Um, I think there are a lot of parallels between this record stylistically and adultery. So, um, and that wasn't intentional. We weren't trying to do that, but there are, there are lines that can be drawn between things. Um, and I mean, as far as it evolving, I think I, I would like to think that we're always kind of evolving. I mean, the band does not sound like it did. It doesn't sound like it did, you know, five years ago or 10 years ago, or, you know, certainly when, um, you know, Greg Combs and Steve Mears and, um, you know, the original guys were, were coming up with the material. You know, I, I think that we're informed by what they did in the past, certainly still. Um, I, I, um, I certainly am like there's there's stuff that 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 I come up with sometimes where I'm like, man, I wonder what Greg would do here and try it. And not not that I'm trying to, like, you know, bite off what Greg did. I, I don't. But, I, but you know, like there's sometimes you know, you'll, you'll take a, a hint or a clue from the past and, and try to rework it and put it in um, different places. I mean, there's a section in a song called Wheel of Misfortune um, on this record that um, there's, there's a part in it that is reminiscent of Valley Girl ventrilo Ventriloquist. And there's a section in it that's reminiscent of Sweet Insanity, the way that, the way that it's assembled. You would never know that that's where those things came from, but you know, like you think about that stuff. I mean, and it's the same, you know, you take cues from yourself or, or your band in the past. It's the same way that, you know, when I, when I work on a, um, on a polka dot song, you, I mean, I take cues from like Lady Gaga and shit like that. I mean, it's, you just try to find a creative 
spark wherever you can. It doesn't have as many stylistic changes as I think our older stuff did. Um, but I think that is, that's part of the newness too and the development of the band. You know, we first started out, Greg is a completely different guitar player than Jay. I mean, just completely. Um, Greg does not have any classical training. He is eminently creative and comes up with, I mean, I love this stuff in Celebrity Sex Scandal. He was kind enough to ask me to play drums on, on the record that we released in, uh, I guess it was last year. Um, so the approach is completely different. So, and our fans appreciate that. They, they appreciate the fact that we evolve and we're not sticking to one thing all the time. That's one of the things I absolutely adore about, about this group of musicians is that we, we have carte blanche. We can do whatever we want, whenever we want, with whom we want, uh, write whatever kind of music we want, because we know we have a solid core of fans that we wouldn't be able to do this if it weren't for them, obviously. Um, and they trust us to do what makes us happy. I mean, we make records we want to listen to. There's obviously a progression in songwriting, um, but I think the familiar elements are just, you know, the, the tones, especially with um, with Tim, the, the presets that he or, he's using on his on his keyboard. It kind of it kind of goes back to maybe some old sounds that were used on, especially Anarchist. So, when, and when I heard that, I was kind of like, ah, are we? just treading water or like, you know, spinning our wheels. And then I was like, yeah, this is, this is kind of cool. It, it, there's new and there's old elements. So once, once we saw it come to life, it, it seemed very cohesive and it, it totally made sense. There's, there are less horns on this record uh, than, than previous efforts. Um, and that wasn't, that wasn't really intentional. Um, Matt Ripito is not on this record. We had to hire other horn players. Um, and they did a great job, but it's, you know, it's different. It's not Matt. So, you know, I mean, that's, that's, that's something that's different there. I, I think that, um, I think Brian and John and Tim, they all played their asses off. It's, they did a great job. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely a step in a different direction with hints of the past, I would say. I have no